Hey guys, MTG Girl here with another unboxing component review. Uh, today I'm going to be opening up Magic the Gathering the Board Game uh, Arena of the Planeswalkers. This came out about a year ago, uh, published by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. This is going to be my second of my thank you videos to my subscribers. So down below in the description, I'm going to have uh, details on the giveaway associated with this game. So only subscribers are eligible. Take, take a look down in the description for details on that. So this is a board game with the theme of Magic the Gathering. It rethemes a Heroescape. So fans of that game might uh, recognize a whole lot of what's in this game. So let's crack it open and take a look at Magic the Gathering Arena of the Planeswalkers. Game box here on the cover we've got some of our favorite Planeswalkers. We've got Jace, Chandra, looks like that might be Gideon, or Liliana is over here. Nyssa is hiding probably. I uh, don't see her quite yet. But on the back, let's see we've got our typical back of the box, uh, what the game setup will look like, some of the components. So this game is not in shrink, but it does have some little stickers holding it shut. So I'm going to take out my professional unboxing tool and open it up. Two, three, four. All right. That's a little stuck. There we go. All right, so we've got these little window cutouts on the top box, top lid, uh, so we could see all the pretty painted miniatures. And <laughs> look at that tray! Wow, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so we've got these little lift out tray. Yeah, yeah. A little lift out tray with all of the planeswalkers. Look, yeah, planes miniature. Not bad. You can see his little whip thing is clear. Oh, it's hard to tell. It looks like some of the painting splattered onto there. But for mass painted miniatures, it's not terrible. Looks like they might have used some sort of airbrushing. And a little bit of a wash here to give it a little textured look. Yeah, I mean, not great. You could definitely, I think you could definitely paint over these to <laughs> improve it if you really wanted to. So let's take out the next one. Jace here. Looks like Jace got a little better, a little better job here, a little detail on his cloak. Colors are very vibrant. Wielding some blue magic. Over here. And we've got Liliana here. Uh, her face is messed up. She looks like some kind of lich instead of a planeswalker. Some, her purple spout of whatever that is. And her signature little headpiece there. There's Chandra. <laughs> really balls of fire. Her face looks like it got scorched. Her little goggles on her head. Yeah. Her hair is definitely on fire. And the skirt looks pretty nice. Some little texturing details right in there. Uh, you can definitely see where they. These uh, boots are kind of. Oh, there's some little cheating going on there in the miniature sculpt. So those are some wicked ears. <laughs> what is going on with that? Oh, okay. The wash, the ink wash on this is is like the best of all of them, though. Okay, so those are the hand painted miniatures, um, the planeswalkers, uh, unit cards. They're double side. They're like double tall. So quite 
large, but these are the cards that give all the information about the units that we're going to control on the board. And it gives their special abilities and stats and all that. So let's get these open and take a look at them kind of quickly. We're not going to like analyze every single detail about them. So we've got Nissa here and with her stats and abilities. And then we've got her Elf Rangers and Pummel Root Elementals. So there they go. The art's very stand you know, very standard for um, you know, modern magic cards, the same quality that you'd expect to see in the illustrations there. So here is Chandra, all in her fiery glory with her stats and abilities. Ooh, phoenixes, flaming phoenixes and fire cats. These guys are interesting because they take up two spaces when they're on the map, so their movement is a little different. And <laughs> rhinos, okay, so where's, you know, Gideon's kind of out of order there. All right, so we've got Gideon, combat mage, I guess that's what you could call him. Stats, abilities, and his rhinos. <laughs> Rocks veterans on the core. We got some core allies going on here. Jace, his abilities. That's a nice, nice illustration of Jace kind of about to pull back his hood. Ooh, illusionary projections. That's pretty nifty. And Leyline Phantoms. Very, very mind sculptory of Jace here. Uh, let's see, oh, Liliana's a little out of order here too. So we've got Liliana, classic art for her and her abilities. <laughs> the like shadow of her mini is totally weird looking. Alright, Relentless Zombies, Liliana, Necromancer Zombies, and Blighted Reavers. Ooh, look at that, they've got like the, the designs that uh, you know, the glowing purple designs of Liliana etched into their corpses. Gross! <laughs> Alright, so there's the cards, and then let's look at the miniatures that go with those. So, these miniatures here in the box, there's like no rhyme or reason to this, and they're going to be a real pain to put back, because you're going to have to match the shape of the mini to find where each goes, and they're all scattered. They didn't do like a line of, you know, red, line of green, it's just all over the place. I suppose that's so they could fit in the box, but I don't know, these vacuum formed things. And this is a pretty good quality one. It's pretty thick, but that's going to be a pain in the butt to get back in. So let's see, we've got, we've got the miniatures here for all the units. They're unpainted, um, but the sculpts are pretty decent. Some good detail if you wanted to paint them yourself. So this is the rhino. It's like Hiding behind the shield, peekaboo. All right, so that's Gideon, and then Gideon's other troops We've got some core allies here. Oh, they all have actually unique sculpts. They're not just repeats. So here's one of them. And here's the other two rhinos that seem to be the same. Cementals here. One, two, three. They're pretty big. The plastic of these look pretty, you know, it's not the highest quality plastic, um, but for the price point of a minis game like this, that's pretty impressive. So here's See, these guys seem very similar in their sculpts, but slightly different. There we go. And where does each go back? Oh no, I took them all out. <laughs> uh, that's the problem with these. Okay. And you go here, and you go here. Alright, and then she's got her 
archers. Elven archers. And here's Nissa's elven archers. Again, with slightly different sculpts. Let's pretty cool. a little windswept cape here. The little cloaks. That's pretty good. Oh, no, I know I didn't get this back in the right ones. Ah! Okay. We got Jace's illusions here. Oh, come out. That guy's like. This is tough. <laughs> There's not a good place to grip this one to get it out. It's really stuck down in there. Here we go. Spread all throughout the box. <laughs> this one definitely has a warped base. There is no way that it's going to stand up straight. So you're going to have to give that a hot water bath uh, before playing with it. So here's his little illusions. Pretty, pretty good. I like that they did these ones in the slightly translucent plastic and give that illusionary effect, like you could just see right through them. A little bit of molding marks there. And we have Liliana's creatures of horror and disgustingness. These are actually less detailed than the paint than the painting job, but they do have like these little. You can see it, kind of see it in the molding. It looks like a similar shape to Liliana's headpiece, right there, kind of around their draped around their neck. So not terribly similar to the card, but still pretty recognizable. Last but not least, we've got Chandra's. Summons here. We've got these phoenixes. These are really nice. I guess they've used the translucent plastic again to reminiscent of fire. These are pretty good. Again, the warped bases. The plastic on these are all over the place. Um, and these vacuum form molds. I'm actually having a lot of difficulty getting them out of these molds. I and mean, once you get them out and put them back in, if you don't push them in too hard, they shouldn't be too hard to get back out. But that's kind of irritating. And these two are so similar and yet they don't fit in each other's spot in the mold. And the fire cats. These are double wide bases so they're going to take up two spots on the map. Makes their movement uh, tricky maneuvers to get them to move around the map. Especially because it's a 3D map, and I'll show you the 3D map. There you go. And again, these are really similar sculpts that do not fit in each other's molds. <laughs> Little terrain pieces in the minis vacuum form holder insert. You can see these have a little puzzle so that they fit together. They actually lock pretty well. Yeah. We've got some little bits. There's a single die and some damage counters here. Let's just break that open. So this is a die that in gameplay you're actually going to have to roll, but it's a spin down. That's really odd, because usually you use a spin down for like keeping track of your health, but you don't need to do that in this game. Um, so actually having an un 
evenly weighted die. Um, tricksy dice rollers could take advantage of this. Um, but I suppose as long as everyone's using the same die, I don't know. That's it's a questionable decision for them to do that. It's not like Wizards of the Coast doesn't know about randomized rolling dice. Alright, and then we have our damage counters. These are little, little bitty uh, red plastic cubes have kind of a dusty finish to them. A little matte finish, but they're done with that kind of translucent plastic. So they catch the light just a little bit. Nice color for damage counters. Real bloody. So these are the cards that make the game much different than uh, HeroScape. So it also makes it feel a lot more like a game that would befit the name Magic the Gathering. Because cards, I mean, Magic is a card game. <laughs> um, so these are actually, some of these cards are very recognizable to Magic players. I mean, they're exactly the same art, same title, but they're laid out very differently. The border is completely different. Um, you know, there's no, none of the normal, there's no cost up here, any of that. But we do have a little uh, card type here in the center. So, and they do um, some pretty different things than some of their counterparts. But, so these are the different decks that the Planeswalkers can use. You know, the red deck is here for Chandra, green for Nyssa, you know, white Gideon, blue Jace, uh, and so forth. So the expansions uh, build upon this and let you actually build your decks and have a little more variety in the game. But with just the base game, you've got your monocolor deck that you can play with. So these are the cards. Just a quick look through them. Um, they're pretty decent. They feel pretty thin, <laughs> actually. Um, the, the cardboard here is a lot thinner than like a magic card. And you might, if you're going to be playing this a lot, maybe sleeve it. Um, there is like nothing in the box to hold the cards, so you're going to want something to keep them together from just like spreading all out in the box. Uh, either a baggie or even a deck box would hold these. So these are, we have the Liliana cards here. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean some of these are just real recent cards even. Alright, so underneath the maze, oh there's more dice. There's some terrain tiles, look, they're all they locked together. Let's see how these fit together, little puzzles. Cool. And they stack on top of each other, which plays into the 3D terrain map. So you can build up your terrain to make movement uh, more difficult through certain areas, so that they stack is actually pretty critical to gameplay. And there's some dice. Here's our attack and defense dice. So these dice are all pretty small actually and just plain old solid opaque white with um, Couple symbols kind of painted on there. They're not etched in there at all. But we've got their shields, swords, and blank side. So you roll these when you're attacking or defending, and how many you roll depends on your card's ability and stats. Okay. Also, here we've got these little runes that'll be on different maps. Uh, when you go with one of your figures to a hex, it'll reveal these runes that have different uh, abilities on here, giving your armies, your units, extra power. Plus, they've got the magic logo on the back. Yeah. Again, kind of a cheap plastic, but you know, this like for so many minis with the price point. Um, on par with the price you would expect from a publisher like Hasbro, but uh, nice quality for for the price point. I mean, there's a real big qualifier on that. So extra toughness, extra movement, and then you draw a card knowledge. Okay. Uh, so far, I don't see any baggies for any of these loose components here. 
Uh, yeah, no, no baggies. So you're gonna have to pull up some of your own. Um, otherwise, all these components are just gonna really loosely rattle around. All right, and then last, we've got these puzzle boards that make up our maps that you build. You build your terrain maps uh, with these puzzle boards. So I'm gonna crack open these. They're all shrink wrapped together for transport. So nice that they did that. These puzzle shaped edges so that when you fit the map pieces together, they can only fit in certain ways and you can build your terrain that way. And there's just different features on them, nice illustrations on these, and the cardboard is, is pretty good thickness. You just got the, just that brown chipboard. Um, so let's see these two, we've got some like desert, some water, and the back we've got, see here's Nyssa, it's a little kind of description about Nyssa. So on the back of each of these is, you know, a different planeswalker from the set. Questionable why they didn't make just make these double sided. Um, probably because of the puzzle edge, they'll only fit a certain way. But not if they couldn't have cut the puzzles a different way so they would be universal from each side. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I know hexes can be hard to work with. But here's Chandra. But even still, you could still have like a different type of terrain that only fits together on the river side. I don't know, it seems like a wasted opportunity to have, you know, all that wasted space in the back of these boards. Make a whole lot of different maps uh, with these, either, either using the pre-printed scenarios or just making up your own. So here we've got another 3D element to the game, are these terrain cutouts that Let's see, let's punch these out. Pretty uh, rough punch board there. I've already got some frayed edges. Uh, this almost kind of got a little... Yeah, a few frayed edges there from punching those out. Really kind of rough, rough punch job there. Oh, and my board is bent. That's a bummer. How did that happen? Oh, that's frustrating. That was just from the punching. Even though, yeah, it's just like in the middle of the chipboard is bent and busted. Oh, that's disappointing. Well, that add to the rubble effect, I guess. I just thought when you've got these 3D terrain standees on the map, you can see that they block off certain hexes and then your bits, your your troops cannot move through those hexes. Um, you know, if they can't stand in it, then they can't go there. So because my bit was, you know, my board was warped, that it's not standing at a complete uh, straight angle. So I don't know if that's going to affect gameplay, but well, there it is. The other one here we have are these kind of granite stones. They fit together here. Let's see how. Oh. The art doesn't really line up down here, does it? Am I putting this in wrong? Is there another way to do it? Uh, looks like not. I don't know, how many different ways can you configure these things? Well, I just don't think the art actually lines up. And that's, that's too bad. But it's still pretty cool effect 3D board um, for, you know, such a low price point miniatures game. Next here is our game guide. It uh, has a table of contents here. So let's see, in here we should find oh, how to set up. Got a description of cards and all that. And then rules. And back here, there we go. You've got a few different uh, suggested setups. So we've got set up for the duel for two players. There. Ooh, for the skirmish, 
two teams of two players. That's supposed to be really fun. And then we've got an, a third setup suggested for three, four, or five players. And that uses all six boards there. So that's pretty cool. And you can see how the terrain changes. All right, so a few scenarios, um, different setups, and you can create your own. So a pretty short little rule book, nice magazine quality paper. So that's the Magic the Gathering board game Arena of the Planeswalkers unboxed and uh, all the components in there. So final thoughts. Um, what do I think of the components of this? For a miniatures game, the components are honestly pretty mediocre. Uh, we've seen a lot of really fantastic miniatures games being published lately with some really top-notch quality. Um, but, um, you know, a caveat to that is for a miniatures game published by Hasbro, for the audience that they're trying to target, at the price point that they're targeting them with, you're getting a great deal here. Uh, there's a lot of miniatures, you know, these hand-painted miniatures, even if they're painted mediocrely, you know, I mean, you would expect for a high-end publisher, this price point would probably be about two to three times what it is MSRP just off the shelf. So for that, you're really getting a good value and the gameplay is pretty fun too. So, um, you know, take that for what, what it is. So if you want to find out how to win these sweet Ajani sleeves, then go check out the description down below and you can figure out how to win these sweet sleeves. You know, Ajani, one of my favorite planeswalkers, love the kitties, not represented in this game. So this is a way to kind of show some Ajani love. So check that out down below. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you liked the video, then a little thumbs up. Greatly appreciated. If you think you like the game, if you want to give it a try out for yourself, then go down to your local game shop, pick up a copy. Um, there are already two more expansions for this, so you can immediately get into deck building and some really d interesting, diverse play that this game really is asking for. And if you can't get to a local game shop or you're just too lazy, uh, click on the affiliate link down below, pick up the game from Amazon, and support my channel instead. So thanks for watching. Click on subscribe, and you'll get alerted to when I do my next video. We'll see you later. Bye!